Hello, welcome back to workshop 2. For those who saw my Easter video, you saw how I left the build for the Sun Terrace in that I cast the foundations and laid some of the blocks. And for those viewers who haven't seen it, the link is here. During the Queen's Jubilee celebrations, I cashed in some more annual leave in order to make a giant leap on this project. Now the first thing I wanted to do was to get two courses of block work laid above what would be the floor level so I could cast the slab. And once I'd laid these two courses of block work, I needed to cast a lintel to bridge between the block work and the house to take the wall over the house drainage system. And whilst this lintel dried, I could then spread out the mountain of rock which would form the hard cart underneath the concrete slab. And the voids were filled with a binding of dry sand and cement and then just watered in and left overnight to cure. Because we're mixing this cement in the mixer, my wife and I decided that to lay the slab in the heat of the day in one go was probably a bit too ambitious for us. So I made a foam work and we split it into two parts, locating the mix on part of the floor that was yet to be cast and making a little shoot out of an old kitchen worktop. We just mixed half of the slab early in the morning before the sun came round the back of the house. We sheeted up most of the adjacent slab with a tarpaulin just to protect the work that we had already done. It always seems to take longer to set up to mix concrete than actually the mixing of the concrete. All that work paid off because it was neat and tidy when we'd finished casting. Now every now and again I think it's good to take on a project that leaves you outside your comfort zone. And laying these blocks was certainly that project. I'm not a bricklayer and I'm certainly not going to win any golden travels for this work. But with a bit of care and attention the block work wall is plumb and square. For me the important thing was I got better as I progressed through the project. And on the Tuesday of the first week we completed casting the rest of the slab. While the slab was set in, started to cast in some of the vertical reinforcement. When I designed this a few months ago, I didn't appreciate how much cutting of block work I would need to do. Almost every block in this build needs cutting. Therefore when I came to mix the cement, I only mixed it in small batches and I alternated between cutting a few blocks, laying a few blocks, cutting a few blocks, laying a few blocks. The mix here is four parts sand to one part cement. And I do find, for some reason, that the sand in France is much coarser than what you would traditionally buy in a UK builder's merchant. One reason I decided to take on this project was that block work, compared to brickwork, seems to be much easier to lay. And the French system makes it quite easy with this system of holes in the blockwork where you can introduce vertical rebar and then pour concrete in to stiffen the old wall construction. Looking at the block on the left hand side here you can see how I've had to cut these holes in the top of the blocks. This cutting really slowed down my progress. I also found that getting the stiffness of the mix right especially in the hot days, was a challenge. Here you can see that the block work at the bottom is slightly wet. As I wetted it before I started work, just so the dry blocks wouldn't pull the moisture from my compound. Whilst I was laying the block work, Lynn was adding preservative to the roof timbers. This should in theory increase my productivity once I start constructing the roof. This stain is a preservative that is called Le Jour. And the French seem to apply it to absolutely everything. And this flavour is medium oak. Although other flavours are available. So meanwhile the block work keeps on growing. And because the slab is now in place I can build both sides at the same time. My process was pretty much 
took up half a dozen blocks, lay half a dozen blocks, and then moved to the other side and do the same. Gave the cement time to partially set. You can see me dousing the top of the blocks with water before continuing. Now for the last few courses I decided to set this out on the floor to make sure the blocks was the right size. I wasn't continuously up and down the ladder. You'll notice the block on the left here has a preformed hole in. Thankfully I didn't have to cut that one. On a hot day with all the PPE it's really sweaty work. To mention the noise and the dust. Here, I got a little bit distracted with one of the low flying French jets that buzz our hillside. And now I had these last three courses, I could finish the pier on this side. And with this pier at its full height, I could now start to think about the joinery and the roof. The front beam is 3x9. Using an offcut, I can establish the full height of the front. This dimension can be then transferred to the rear wall of the house. And I can work out how much slope I have or degree of pitch for the roof. Note the old wall plate of the old construction just below. I kept this on purpose as I thought it might be useful to attach things to during the construction of the new roof. Now the sun doesn't shine every day here. Whilst it was raining, we started to paint the timber that will be the underside of the roof. This timber became the biggest issue of the project, but more on that later. A few hours later, it stopped raining, which means I can now finally finish the block work. The block work was finished on a Saturday, which means it took me a full week to get to this point. This pier needs to be plumb and parallel to the opposite one. So I had to perform a few circus tricks to walk backwards and forwards on where the sill will eventually be to ensure the measurements were correct. Because there is a continuous beam sat on these walls I need to make sure that the wall is perfectly in line. So I annoyed my wife by using her best gardening string. And now the pier is up to full height I can check how level it is between the two. I'm actually prepared to cast a concrete pad on the top of one of them to get it level. And I was actually genuinely amazed that it was absolutely bang on. My block work may not be the neatest work, but with some care and attention, it's plumb, square and level. I can now also appreciate the size of this thing. New workshop? Hmm. So as I said earlier, laying block work in this fashion is made a lot easier by introducing some vertical reinforcement bar. So here I'm cutting some 8mm bar to length and this is just slid into various pockets around the walls mostly at the corners and the ends of the runs then the holes are filled with a sloppy mix of concrete and just packed tightly The longest stock size of beams at my local builder's merchant is 5 metres, or a tad over, which is the exact size I've made the concrete structure. And now it's time to start working on the joinery, but that's for the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll have some comments, especially from the people who think that my bricklaying skills have much to be desired. Music